All right, so before we get into the settings of the camera, let me just briefly explain you about the setup that I've got here. So it's a very simple budget setup. Uh, now, before I go into that, let me just tell you, if you are interested in studio photography and you want to dedicatedly learn how to set up a home studio and you want to learn this in detail, then I've got a course called Studio Photography for Beginners, which has 35 videos, which just focus on all this. But in this course, of course, it's a small section but it's still good enough to at least teach you how to use your flash to get studio portraits. So again, we have a very simple setup here, which is uh, behind me, you can see we've got a very basic backdrop with some uh, stands and a muslin cloth. Uh, you can also use a seamless paper that you, uh, is very famous nowadays. Uh, that doesn't leave any texture or something behind that. Slightly better, though you will see when we ultimately click our portraits, we won't let the light fall on the backdrop. So there'll be no light spill there, so it won't really cause too much of a problem uh, anyway. But uh, basically, we've got uh, these stands and this uh, backdrop. That's the first thing that you're going to be needing. I've got a black uh, cloth right now. You can do this with any color, whatever, whatever I'm going to show you. All right, so what is the second important thing? You can see on the light stand, we've got our basic setup that we use for the outdoor portraits, which is the Godox flash. Uh, the main flash that we've used is again mounted in the same way with the same modifier. So there's no real difference here. And if you look at the light here, there's a, uh, on, on my right, there's a light here which is the newer flash that we are using. And this is, of course, you can see like this also has this small softbox of its own. Now, let me just explain you briefly. When you do studio portraits, there's going to be one light which is called as your key light. And that light is going to be the strongest light in your setup. So that is going to be the main light. And then we have something called as a fill light. A fill light is usually way, way lower than the power that it fires at. You keep it much lower than the key light and it's just supposed to fill in those shadows. You know, for example, the key light here is firing on the left. So my left cheek will come bright, but my right cheek can go too much into shadows. That's okay for some dramatic type of shots, but usually you want to fill that. You can do that with the reflector also, but in this case, we're going to solve that problem by using another flash on the opposite side, which is going to be powered way lower, and that's going to be uh, this flash. And then later on, we're also going to see some extra things by using a third flash right now, which is uh, behind me, which is pointed towards the background. Uh, so this is the Nikon SB700 that I've placed here. Now, initially, we're not really going to be firing all these lights. So this is a three light setup that I'm going to show you ultimately. But right now, we're only going to start with one light, which is going to be our key light. And because once you see how this particular light, what is the effect that it gives you, you might even find that you actually don't need more than one light in many cases. But then with one light, of course, there are going to be some problems like the fill light not coming in. That's when we'll move to this. And that light behind is also going to solve some problems. So now, the big question is what settings to use in the camera. So you understood the setup here, not, you know, it's a fairly simple setup, but what about the camera settings? Well, that's where the difference is going to come as opposed to shooting outdoors. So let's go into our camera and first of all, let's try to understand what we need to do. All right, so you can see here, this is the chair and behind this, you can see the flash also, but that is going to be covered by me. Ultimately, I'm going to be sitting on this chair. Now, here's how things work. Remember the settings that we chose in outdoor portrait, the, our first job was to make sure that we, have, we had a slight bit of ambient exposure. That means the background was to our liking. In studio portraits, there's only one difference, which is that the first shot that you take, that means the first shot that we take when this flash is gonna be off, so I'm just gonna switch off this trigger, that means none of the flashes are firing right now, right? So we switched on our, off our key light because I switched off this trigger. Uh, now, I'm going to go and sit there and what our job is that when my camera takes this natural light shot, there's no flash firing here, there should be no ambient exposure. And of course, there's no flash exposure because we are not firing flash. No flash exposure, no ambient exposure. What is that sh shot going to look like? Well, it's going to be basically a very, very underexposed or almost a shot which is black. And that is exactly what we want because in studio portraits, the ambient light should not mix with the flashlight because it just causes a lot of problems in color balance, changes the skin tone color because the natural light has a different color balance and your flash has a different color balance. In studio photography, the background anyway is not important, right? So it doesn't really matter because you know, you just have a backdrop behind, there's no sky or something behind. So the ambient exposure anyway is not 
necessary in studio photography. So the first shot that we're going to take is should come black. That's what you have to remember. Or almost like very, very dark. You should not have any ambient exposure forming anything. And one of the best settings to do that is get your shutter speed to the sync speed, like you can see here. Get your f-stop to 8 and get your ISO to 100. I find these settings to work in most of the situations for the shot. But let's take a shot and let's see if this works for us or not. So I've already, uh, you know, previously I sat on that chair. I already locked my focus using this camera. So right now it's on manual focus, uh, but I've already locked the focus where I ultimately will be sitting. And I have my remote with me, which I'm going to be using to fire, uh, to fire this shot. So let's take this first shot without any of the flashes fired. All right, so I'm ready to take the shot. All right, so you can see here that we have been able to achieve our objective, which is basically get a dark image. You can't see me, you can't see anything. That means now we know ambient light is not doing anything in our studio, right? So now it's time to switch on our flash. And I've already, the shots that I'm gonna be taking here, I've already practiced these before, so I know what power to use for each flash. Right now, we're only firing the Godox flash, the key light, which is mounted on the big softbox. And you can see here, the power is one by four. Let's just take the shot, and you'll see that this power is usually should be enough to get our shot correct. So look. All right, let's have a look at this shot. And you can see that we've got a nice looking portrait. And you know, that's just firing. This is whatever you're seeing right now is just being lit or illuminated by the flash exposure because the ambient exposure is not uh, doing anything. Therefore, it doesn't really cause any problems because only one type of light is uh, coming here. Now, if you just look at the shot again, we have now this was the key light. You can go for this dramatic look if you want. So sometimes one light is more than enough. But now I want to just light from this side. I want to fill in the light. So what I'm going to do is remember the newer flash that we saw on that small little tripod and the small softbox. I'm just going to switch that on. And this is set to. I've already tested this before. Uh, you know, I just wanted to, you know, create some sort of uh, fill light. So this is just set at. 164th of the power. So this is 1 by 4, this is 1 by 64. Of course, you'll have to do a bit of trial and error when you do it for the first time. So let's take this shot. Uh, and yeah, of course, I forgot to mention the most important thing. Remember this, the trigger that we're using is for the Godox flash. flash. So quiz time for you. How do we fire this flash? Now, because both of them are from different brands, they have no connection with each other. Well, of course, you must have guessed it by now. This flash has been set to the slave mode. So it's just going to detect a pulse of light, which is going to come from this flash, and this is also going to fire. So it doesn't matter. Uh, usually, it's all, of course, always better to get the same brand flashes. Uh, but you know, indoors especially, it's not really a big deal. Outdoors, yes, sometimes we've seen that the line of sight may not be maintained uh, in the slave mode when you're just you know using this optical triggering method. But indoors, because the light is going to bounce around, it's ultimately going to be detected by the other flash. So this is, is going to be a fill light. Let's take this shot. All right, so you can see here, this time we have been able to just fill in the light. If I just show you the before and after, this was without the fill light and this is with the fill light. So we've been able to just get those nice looking highlights on the left cheek also. Now let's solve the third problem, which is, you can see that I've got black hair, right? So they, they are merging in the black background behind. So how do we solve this? Well, there are two ways to solve this. One is that we can, you know, we can just lighten up the background by pointing a light behind. So because it's a black background, if you point a light towards, remember our third flash, which is pointed at the background, you just fire it at the background and it's just going to turn the background lighter, like something like gray, and that's going to solve the problem. You can also solve it by pointing the lights towards my hair from behind, which is referred to as the hair light. We're going to see both the approaches. So let's start. So I've got the third flash here, and I'm just going to switch it on. This is going to illuminate the background. Just going to, again, this is a Nikon flash, so I'm going to set it to the slave mode. And this is set to 1 by 8th power right now. So let's just see how the shot looks. Now all three flashes are firing this time. So let's do this.
All right, let's look at this shot. And you can see that we have been able to light our background. Uh, do forgive me for the texture that you can see on the right side. I just wasn't careful enough in setting up my cloth properly. That's why you can see that texture, otherwise not a big deal. And that's where seamless papers really, really help you because they don't give you this uh, problem. But if you set up your you know, uh, cloth properly, it's usually not a big deal. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna simply do the same thing again, but this time, We'll be just pointing this flash at my hair. So this is gonna turn into a hair light. I'm just gonna raise it. Usually hair light comes from slightly a downward angle, like this, and from behind. All right, so you can see that we've got our hair light all set up, pointing downwards. And this, uh, this time, this flash has been uh, set to one by 32 power because you just want the hair light to you know not be too strong not to completely dominate uh, From behind it just has to create that subtle line of separation So let's take this shot and let's see what we achieve so the key light on the fill light on and the hair light on All right, let's see how the shot looks all right, so this time we have been able to successfully utilize our hair light and you can see that this flash going on from behind has just illuminated this uh, back part from my head and this is you know, giving us a nice separation right from the body hair to the shoulder to the head and this just separates me out from the uh, black background. And you know, you can just use, so you always don't have to fire against the background to illuminate things. You can even, even if I fire it towards myself, I can definitely uh, just separate myself out of the background. Right, so let's continue with the video. I hope that you like this video. This video is from my off-camera flash for beginners course, which has around four hours of video content. This course is available via Udemy, as you can see in front of you. And on Udemy, this has got the highest rated tag, which is only given to the best courses on Udemy. So if you like the video, then do check out this course because this course will help you really, really master off-camera flash in its entirety. So I hope to see you inside the course.